Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I want to share with you my favorite picture profile for the DJI Mavic Pro. And right now, to save time, my favorite picture profile is D-Log, with the sharpness set to zero in most daylight situations, unless I am filming in a very high dynamic range environment, such as filming a sunset with shadowed trees below it or something like that, at which point I then want my sharpness set to plus one. Otherwise, as far as contrast and saturation goes, I want both of those to be set to negative one. And that is my picture profile. But that's really only part of the story. I use a lot of other settings in the DJI GO app to make sure that I capture beautiful cinematic imagery, and I wanna share those with you now. First, I shoot in the MP4 video format. I know it gives you the option of MP4 or MOV, I shoot in MP4. Second, I shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second, which I then conform in post to 24 frames per second. I film at 1 60th shutter speed, which I'm able to hit even on the brightest and sunniest of days because I use Polar Pro's Cinema Series of ND filters with polarizers. I also prefer to keep my zebras, AKA the overexposure warning set to on, so I can tell which parts of my image are overexposed. And I also watch my EV meter, and I prefer to keep it at 0 0.0, 0 0.3 over. I don't really want it higher than that unless I'm say filming into the sun at which point it is going to be higher but normally in most shooting conditions EV at zero works great for me last two things here I promise I shoot with manual white balance with my Kelvin value set to normally 7,000 on a bright and sunny to partly cloudy day and I shoot with my ISO set to 100 because I don't want extra noise ah oh, there those are my picture profile settings for the Mavic Pro in their entirety because I hate hate whenever I'm watching a picture profile video or something like that and it's 15 minutes long and 14 of the 15 minutes is a person talking about their cat with only like one minute of actual content about the picture profile. So I'm like watching it, skipping through, like just tell me where the picture profile is and heaven forbid they put it in the video description. It bugs me to no end. So I like to put things right at the start for you. You don't even really need to honestly watch the rest of this video if you don't want to. But if you want to, the reason I have the rest of this video is to explain why I chose those settings. That way you're not emailing me and comment like, Matt, why'd you choose that? Hopefully the rest of this video will tell you that. So please keep watching if you wanna know why I chose these settings. Incidentally, if you wanna check out my full length video review of the Mavic Pro, where I answer the question whether it is good enough for professional filmmakers and for commercial use, please check that out. I'll have a link to it up here in the corner and down in the description. Now, on to why I chose these settings. First, I shoot in D-Log because it offers the best dynamic range and it gives me the most flexibility whenever it comes to color grading. Also, the sensor on the Mavic Pro is really tiny, so any chance I can get to boost the dynamic range and image quality, I'm gonna take it and D-Log enables me to do that. Also, in February 2016, DJI released a firmware update for D-Log that actually makes it look so much better. So if you purchased your Mavic early and you tested D-Log and you're like, this is gross, Try it out again because I think it looks a whole lot better now. Next is sharpness. And in most shooting situations, I wanna keep my sharpness set to zero. I never wanna turn it to negative one, negative two, or negative three because that can really make all the colors start to run together and you get this watercolor effect that you may have heard about other people talking about. So by keeping my sharpness at zero, I do not deal with that. The only time that I wanna turn my sharpness up to plus one though is whenever I'm shooting in a very high dynamic range scenario. So say I'm flying in towards the sunset, it's super bright and there's trees below and and it's really shadowy. The issue and the reason I shoot a plus one in these scenarios is that DJI has introduced a noise reduction algorithm that is present at negative three through zero on the sharpness scale. And whenever that is turned on, if you are shooting in a high dynamic range environment, it can make some things look sharp, but it will muddy up everything else. And so you end up with this weird looking image that doesn't look good at all. To override that, you can set your sharpness to plus one though, and that will turn off the algorithm. And the only reason I know this is thanks to another filmmaker also named Matt, who runs the Film Poets. And he made an awesome video showing this high dynamic range scenario with the sunset and the trees and showed how turning things to plus one can fix that. So I will link to his video in the description here if you wanna watch it and I would highly recommend it because it is really great. Next, I have my contrast and saturation both set to negative one. And you're probably thinking, Matt, why would you do that? You could set them to negative two or negative three. I realize that. But honestly, D-Log is already really pretty flat. I don't need it to be any flatter. So I find that by keeping it at negative one, I still have a lot of range to play with for both my contrast and my saturation to grade the image as I see fit. Now on to even more video settings. I shoot in the MP4 video format. I do not use the MOV format. Reason being that I read a few forum posts where people had some horror stories about MOVs and I was like, you know, 
MP4 works for me, it looks great. I see no quality difference between the two, so I'm gonna shoot an MP4 and it works great for me. You're probably also wondering why I shoot in 4K. Well, because I shoot with this camera in 4K and I'm now uploading in 4K, so I want everything to be in 4K. And you've probably read some forum posts and watched a couple videos about people saying, isn't 2.7K better than 4K? You should shoot in 2.7K. Through all of my testing, all the videos, I've watched them too. I do not see a real quality difference between 2.7K and 4K, but because I'm shooting in 4K and I wanna make sure that I'm maximizing my image quality, I've been shooting in 4K. But hey, if you are delivering in 1080p, maybe 2.7K would work better for you. You can test it yourself, but for me, I'm gonna keep on shooting in 4K. Regardless of whether you're recording with this drone in 4K or 2.7K, do not, I repeat, do not record with this drone in 1080p. Don't do 1080-24, don't do 1080-60, don't do it because the bit rate is not high enough and the image will fall apart so quickly you'll be seeing watercolor effect all over the place. This drone is not made for shooting 60 frames per second. If you want that, buy a Phantom 4 Pro. With this drone, it looks best if you keep it at 2.7K or at 4K. Now, whenever I'm shooting in 4K, I'm also recording at 30 frames per second. You're probably thinking, hey, Matt, that's kind of weird. Shouldn't cinematic be 24? That's what the movies are in. I still export at 24. I import my footage at 30, I conform it in Premiere to 24 frames per second, and then I export it. And the reason that I do this is that I find that if there's any little gimbal shakes or any little weirdness, the 20% or so slow-mo that's introduced by taking it from 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second is going to smooth that out. So everything still looks like it's real time. You can't even tell that it's in slow motion, but it makes things look a little bit smoother. It looks better to me in my opinion. So that is why I shoot at that frame rate. Last few things here, I shoot at 1 60th shutter speed, which you'll notice is double my frame rate of 30 frames per second. And I'm able to do that by using the Polar Pro Cinema series of ND filters with polarizers, which now I've mentioned twice in this video, but I really do like. The reason that I shoot at 1 60th shutter speed is because I find that it results in better looking motion blur that I find to be more pleasing to the human eye. If you're shooting at 1 1,000th shutter speed or something really high, you're gonna notice a more jagged, sharp looking video, and you're really gonna be able to notice the difference between every frame, whereas if you're shooting with a lower shutter speed, it is not going to look like that. Next, I shoot with my zebras, or as they're called in the DJI GO app, my overexposure warning set to on, because that is going to make zebra lines appear on my overexposed portions of my footage. The benefit to this is that I can tell at a glance if my footage is overexposed or not. And if I want it to be, say if I'm filming into the sun, probably gonna be overexposed. If I'm filming just some ground and landscape, I don't wanna see that overexposed. So by checking the zebras, I can tell at a glance. In addition to using zebras, I also keep a close eye on my EV meter, which ideally I want to be reading 0, 0.0, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.7 over even because I'm shooting in a log format. And log formats require a lot of light. They want your image to be very bright, and then you can color correct and grade them back down to the brightness that you are seeing. So the main thing that I'm looking for whenever I'm looking at my EV is to make sure that it is not in the negative numbers. I never wanna see negative 0.3, negative 0.7, because once you start introducing darkness, whenever you are shooting in a log format, it's gonna be so much harder to bring those brightness levels back up to zero as you see them. So it is always best when shooting in a log format to shoot almost overexposed. So I'll be shooting and I will have it almost to where my zebras are showing up, and then I'll turn it down right below that where I don't see zebras. And that is the level that I want to be shooting at. Now this is a little difficult because the Mavic has a fixed aperture. So it's not like you can just open up the aperture and adjust it. So in that case, I'm using the ND filters to change my exposure and check my zebras, check my EV levels and make sure that they're looking good. Last setting, of course, is ISO. And I greatly prefer to shoot with my camera at 100 ISO because once you start introducing more sensitivity, ISO 200, ISO 400, 800, you're immediately gonna be introducing noise because the sensor is just so gosh darn tiny on the Mavic. So what I find is best is that if you're shooting in a twilight situation, if you can keep from going above 400 ISO, you should be okay without too much noise. But once you start cranking up 800, it's gonna start getting really muddy really quickly and you're gonna have to use some denoising software and things still won't look as sharp. So this drone does not excel in low light, even super twilight, not vampires, footage. I find that it's best to use maybe a Phantom 4 Pro or an Inspire or Inspire 2, a camera with a larger sensor if you need night shooting. But for daylight shooting, I love the Mavic. It looks so great, makes me so happy. I love this picture profile and I think it works really well.
That's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you and given you some great insight into my exact picture profile settings that I use whenever I'm filming video with a Mavic Pro. I have another future video planned that details my exact color grading workflow for this exact picture profile. So please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see that in the future. I'll also link to that up here if you're watching this video later. I'll put a little bubble link up here so you can link to it and I'll put a link in the description. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with you through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a huge, like massive help to me if you would consider liking this video. And I realize that I just said subscribe earlier, so don't click subscribe again if you already did because then you're like unsubscribing. Just click once and that'll be fine. You also may have noticed some B-roll footage in this video that didn't look very Texas. And that's because I took a trip to Iceland last month and it was incredible, so awesome. And I could not help but share some of the clips that I shot there. I shot so much and I'm planning on doing a travel video that I will be posting soon once I finish editing it. But for now, I wanna share just a few clips with you. If you wanna see more, I post a ton of behind the scenes, clips and footage and time lapses and drone shots and everything to my Instagram page and my Facebook page. My Instagram is instagram.com slash whoismat and my Facebook page I will link to in the description of this video. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one filmmaker consulting now. So if you wanna to talk to me about filmmaking, drone videos, how to film better drone videos, wedding filmmaking, how to make money, how to book clients, how to make money flying your drone, that could be cool. I would love to talk to you and you can sign up for that at whoismat.com slash consulting. Last thing, you can also check out my wedding film production company, FilmStrong Productions at filmstrong.com. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.